JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 2nd. I am Karol Ambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading south against most of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It underperformed the most versus the Canadian dollar, the Aussie and the Kiwi in that order, while it uh, act out minor gains only against the Euro, the Swiss franc and the Yen. Now, the strengthening of the commodity-linked currencies and the weakening of the safe havens suggest uh, that investors' uh, appetite remains supported for another day. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU and US indices traded in the green with a positive morale rolling into the Asian session today. It seems that investors continued placing bets on the prospect of a global economic recovery as uh, governments around the globe continue to ease uh, their lockdown measures adopted due to the fast spreading coronavirus. Market participants may have also taken relief after US President Trump announced on Friday that he would end special treatment for Hong Kong, avoiding bold action against China like the imposition, uh, the imposition of sanctions and or fresh tariffs. This may have allowed market participants to maintain hopes that the phase one trade deal between the world's two largest economies will stay in place and that at some point in the future, the two nations could eventually finalize an accord. That said, that was uh, tempered somewhat by reports that uh, China has told state-owned firms to stop farm purchases uh, from the US, notably soybeans. Anyhow, China hasn't been buying uh, US soybeans this year and thus risk appetite recovered again. Another negative was that US President Trump will send US troops into the streets to control violence uh, triggered by the death of uh, George Floyd in police, in, in police uh, custody. This may have uh, raised concerns over a national uh, economic recovery as well as fears of uh, a second wave of coronavirus um, infections. That said, markets shrugged off this news as well. Now, as for our view, it has not changed. As we already noted, it seems that investors are more focused on the prospect of a global economic recovery and uh, barring any fresh and more serious tensions between the US and China, they may continue to increase their risk exposures. As we know that several times in the past, among currency pairs, one of the best gouges of uh, broader market sentiment may be the yen. As a risk-linked risk, uh, currency, the Aussie may continue to attract flows as investors divert their capital out from uh, safe havens like the yen. In short, we expect Aussie yen to continue trading north in the near term. We believe that for that to change, the US and China may have to scale back uh, the progress made so far in their trade, in their trade uh, relationship and or to start another round of uh, tit-for-tat uh, tariffs. Now, speaking about the Aussie, and during the early morning today, we had an RBA decision. However, there were no fireworks in the aftermath. The bank kept its benchmark rate and the target of its three-year government bond yields unchanged at 0.25%, uh, with officials noting that they have purchased uh, government bonds on only one occasion since the previous meeting. They also repeated that they are prepared to scale up bond purchases again if uh, necessary. The Aussie barely reacted uh, to the announcement, perhaps as this was the base case outcome. 
remember uh, yesterday we know that uh, that um, the prospect of better days may ha may have allowed RBA officials to continue reducing their bond purchases. It appears that the main driving force of uh, the Australian currency is uh, the improvement in the broader market sentiment and as we already know that we expect this to continue for a while more. As for today, market participants may pay some attention to the start of another round of Brexit negotiations. This would be the final round ahead of the June 18th and 19th EU summit, by which the UK must decide whether to ask for an extension uh, to the transition period or not. Now, with Prime Minister Boris Johnson insisting insisting over a December 31st uh, deadline, a failure to find to find common ground is likely to increase fears over a disorderly exit in the end of uh, the year, which combined with the prospect of negative interest rates by the Bank of England may keep the pound pressured. That said, we would prefer to exploit any further pound weakness against currencies which we expect to stay strong, like the commodity linked ones. One of the pairs we would expect to extend its current downtrend is GBP Aussie. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, the economic calendar for today appears very light with no major economic indicators on the schedule. The only one worth mentioning is the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil in uh, inventories, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. As for tonight, during the Asian morning Wednesday, we get Australia's uh, GDP for the first quarter. Expectations are for the economy to have contracted 0.3% quarter over quarter after expanding 0.5% in the fourth quarter of 2019, which will drive the year-over-year -year rate down to 1.4% from 2.2%. Compared to the contraction rates in other major economies, this may be among the softer ones and uh, would confirm RBA Governor Lowe's recent remarks that uh, the economic downturn in Australia may not have been as severe as, in, as initially thought. In other words, such a print is unlikely to tempt RBA policymakers to start thinking about expanding their stimulus program. China's Kaijin Services PMI for May is also, is also coming out tonight, but uh, no forecast is currently available. That said, bearing in mind that the official non-manufacturing index rose to 53.6 from 53.2, we would see decent chances for the Kaijin index to have moved in a similar fashion. So that's it uh, for me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.